Welcome, everybody, to the latest edition of the Bullpen with Adam the Bull, brought to you by Bet Rivers. Coming up on today's podcast, we react to a huge Game 1 victory for the Cleveland Cavaliers at home against the Orlando Magic. After having to sit through months of painful regular season basketball, we got to see what NBA postseason, what the NBA postseason is all about. Defense, physical play, chippiness, tough fighting basketball against a team that likes to grind it out. And the Cleveland Cavaliers showed, at least for one day, that unlike last year, they're not going to go out as a soft team. The Cavs got embarrassed by the New York Knicks last year in the playoffs, losing in five games. And there was a lot of talk by all of us about how soft the Cavs were. And they seemed like an extremely soft team for uh, much of the back end of the regular season. But today, they came out and they look great. I'm going to talk about it, and then my buddy Mikey McNuggets is going to join me to discuss as he was in the arena to see the Cavs' victory. We'll get his take on it as well. That's all coming up on this edition of The Bullpen with Adam the Bull, brought to you by Bet Rivers. You're watching Adam the Bull on the Bet Rivers Network. So... Folks, if you haven't used the Bet Rivers app yet, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, every Tuesday and Friday, I give you a Adam the Bull special parlay that you can bet at Bet Rivers. And I hit on Tuesday. The baseball parlay hit on Tuesday. And it hit again yesterday. So I'm two for two this week, three for four overall. Yesterday's uh, parlay was plus eight something. I got to look it up now. And so if you hit, if you bet the parlay with me that I gave you yesterday, it was plus 855, my parlay yesterday. So you could have made some good money. I hope some of you did. My parlay yesterday was the Brewers to beat the Cardinals, which they did. It took extra innings, but they did it. Uh, Guardians and A's over eight and a half runs. They scored, I think, about 12 in that one. And the Diamondbacks and Giants over eight runs. I think the Diamondbacks alone scored like 17 yesterday. So check out the Bet Rivers app. My parlay specials every Tuesday and Friday, and you can bet on everything else, the NBA playoffs, of course. So let's talk about what the Cavs did today, which it was a weird game because the Cavs made their first five threes, then they missed 20 in a row. <laughs> And you think, okay, well, you missed 23 pointers in a row. You had to have lost a game. Not even close. The Cavs were never really in danger. They pretty much had between like a 6 and 15 point lead for most of the game. Uh, they played absolutely stifling defense. And so despite in the end shooting 27% from three, they still were the better shooting team. Orlando shot 22% from three. And overall, Orlando 33% from the field. That is just pitiful. They went to the line 30 times and still lost by 14. They went to the line 30 times. They, um, the Cavs missed 20 straight three-pointers, and the Cavs still won the game by 14 points. So while the offense wasn't extremely sharp, especially from three, uh, it was a rough game for the bench. The starters did a heck of a job. Uh, well, I will say this. Niang, uh, you know, he offensively he struggled he was one of seven from the field no of four of three but he was an animal on defense at some times max Struess as well seven points nine rebounds uh but donovan mitchell looked great he i would say uh, he looked almost 100 percent, 30 points in this one and uh jared allen had some great dunks on some excellent passes from mitchell 16 and 18 for jared allen evan mobley with a monster first half Hit two of four threes, six of 12 overall from the field. He had 16 points, 11 rebounds, two assists, three blocks, and only one turnover. Did pretty much all of it in the first half, but they didn't need much in the second half. The Magic scored 26 in the first quarter. They scored 57 the rest of the way. Cavs scored 33 in the first quarter, only scored 64 the rest of the way. It was a bad offensive game, but the Cavs played great defense, holding the Magic to 83 to take a 1 0 lead in the series. All right, when I come back, my man Mikey McNuggets is going to join me. 
He just left the arena where the Cavs took a 1-0 lead. We'll get his take on the first game of the series coming up next in the bullpen with Adam the Bull, brought to you by Bet Rivers. All right, welcome back to the bullpen with Adam the Bull, brought to you by Bet Rivers. And joining me now, the producer of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show and uh, basketball aficionado, Thank you. Mikey McNuggets. And you were at the game. You've been going to every game. I think you've been at more games than anybody lately. Uh, yeah, I sit in Jason's press seat a lot because he's not there. So he gets much. Oh, he, he gets. He wasn't there today. No, he was there today. But oh, I'm okay. saying for the regular season games, yeah. Jason's uh, a 50-50 guy. And over the last half of the season, we started doing the Ultimate Cavs show bowl. And I was like, well, if we're going to do that, I might yeah. as well go to the games. And instead of illegally streaming them because I refuse to play for Bally's, I might as well. Sure. Walk up and watch him in person. So, yeah, I've been out a right. bunch, and today's atmosphere was awesome. Hell of a win for the Cavs, Bull. And uh, I think the best part is I would say Cleveland probably played a C-plus game. So there's a lot better they can play, and they still yeah. win by double digits. By the way, for those who may not know, I'm sure 99% of our audience knows who Jason is, but that's, of course, Jason yes. Lloyd of the Athletic, for the 1% of you who may not know. <laughs> but uh, were you at the playoff games last year against the Knicks? I went to game five as a fan, not okay. in any capacity as a media member. All right. So, but by game five, the Cavs were down 3 1. So there probably wasn't a ton of energy in the building. Terrible atmosphere. And yeah. the Cavs played horrendous. And about seven minutes into the game, I was like, this one's over and done with. So, yeah. night and day, night and day from last year to this year. Energy was, how was it being in the building today? It was good. Uh, it was definitely more energetic than any regular season game I can remember outside of the fourth quarter against Boston, where I had that incredible 20-point comeback led right, by right, Dean right. Wade. But from start to finish, the Cavs led and the energy was there. And I think a lot of it was Cleveland already found public enemy number one in Mo Wagner. Not yeah. Franz, who we talked about, but his brother Mo, yeah. who caused a lot of chaos. There yeah. was immediately... He looks like an ugly Joe Burrow, by the way, Bull. I don't <laughs> know if that, but he looks like if Joe Burrow got hit with an ugly pan, that's Mo Wagner. Not bad. I didn't think uh, about that, but it's not bad. No, and he's still you know seven foot and probably will get yeah any girl he wants, which good for him. But That's true, he's public enemy number one. The refs let a lot of stuff go, and the fans were into that from start to. Finish. I love it. Yeah, I loved it. it. That was it. Felt like an old school. It felt like you know obviously these neither team is as good as these teams, but in a way, it felt like the Knicks and the Heat yeah. back in the day. I mean, maybe it's a Pat little Riley. before your time, but yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that was. Like where the final score was 87, 83, 92, 87, like a lot of, and you said the Cavs played a C plus game. I mean, on defense, I'd say they played an A game on offense. They really played like a D game and they didn't, you know, they didn't really shoot the ball well at all. No, I'm I mean, to, some of those stats that we were talking before, like you look at these stats, if, if, if you didn't watch the game and I just told you the Cavs shot missed uh 20, well, they made what? Their first five threes, and then they went three of 25 after that yep. from three. And the Magic went to the free throw line 30 times. You would have said, well, there's no way the Cavs could win that game. Not only did they win it, they win it going away, which is bizarre. Yeah. But it is I what mean, it is. It was an A defensive performance. You look yeah. at the overall numbers for Orlando. I got the final box score right here, Bull. Yeah. Orlando shot 32.6% from the floor, 21.6% from three. They turned the ball over 12 times. They only had 16 assists. So you limit a team yeah. to almost a one to one assist to turnover ratio, under 35% and under 25% in the two most important statistical categories offensively. That's an A. Plus. I don't think it's possible for Orlando to shoot worse. No. So it's a good thing the Cavs maybe got their worst shooting performance as well out at the same time Orlando did. Right. But they forced Orlando to take tough shots. And yes. I said it on the show. I said it on the Ultimate Cavs show last week, Bull. If Palo's going to beat you, so be it. He takes a bunch of long twos. He's going to make difficult shots. He's a great player. But you can't let the other guys beat you. And Palo had 24 tonight. He was 9 of 17. He also turned the ball over nine times. This was the rest of their starting five. Franz Wagner. 7 of 15 from the floor, 2 of 6 from 3. Fine. Jonathan Isaac, 3 of 8, 2 of 4 from 3. Gary Harris, 0 of 6, 0 of 5. Jalen Suggs, 4 of 16, 1 of 7 from 3. Yeah, Those Harris. Guys, if they beat you, so be it. You can live with that. Yeah. But tonight is why I think you got to let those guys be the ones to beat you. It can't be Palo Bancaro. Well, you look at the guard play for Orlando. 
was probably the worst, maybe the worst guard play in the history of the NBA playoffs. Because think about this. Harris, the five guards they used, Harris, Suggs, Ingles, Anthony, and Fultz. Those guys combined were four <laughs> for 35 from the field. Yeah. And let's see, five, 10, and one for 17 from three. I, I don't think it's possible to have five, the top five guards in your rotation play any worse of an offensive game. It's probably the worst offensive game by top five guards in a playoff in the history of the sport. I mean, it, it was in, it, it yeah. was incredible. None of them could do anything. And the, and a lot of times they would like try to take it to the basket and the Cavs would cut them off and then they would just be all over them. I mean, there was a lot of really great defense being played by Cleveland in this one. It was. And, and part of the reason I like this matchup from Cleveland's perspective is because of Orlando's lack of shooting, you can play both Allen and Mobley together and when they're on the court together unless you have some really really crafty guards but it's tough to score yeah. with those two guys they're both individually very good defenders especially around the rim and when you have to deal with not one but okay I'll get around Jarrett but now I have to worry about Evan sliding over and affecting my shot from the weak side yeah that's really tough and yeah. because Orlando doesn't have the players offensively to make Cleveland pay for that on the other end of the ball they can live with playing those two bigs together and that's why I think in game two that first quarter is so crucial. I, I, we were talking on the phone as I was walking down here, but yeah. I mentioned them like the Steelers or even the Ravens, for example. Yeah. Like if they get out to a lead, that team's built to play from ahead, not from right. behind. I yeah. think Orlando's a basketball team yeah. meant to play from ahead, not behind as well. And when we talked to Kendra Douglas earlier this week, the Magic team reporter, she said games that Orlando starts out hot in the first quarter, similar to the Cleveland Cavaliers, their win percentage is very high. When they start out slow, they have a struggle. They struggle to come back because they don't have the shooting. And I know Anthony right. tweeted out this stat earlier in the year, Bull, the amount of 20-point comebacks in the NBA this year because of the prolific three-point shooting. Do you know yeah. who didn't have a 20-point comeback this season? Orlando. Because they can't shoot threes. By the way, I think the fact that, like, you know, Orlando got very chippy early. They were physical. They thought they could intimidate the Cavs because the Cavs, we know what happened against the Knicks last year, but – you know, kudos to the Cavaliers, who we've called them soft for a year now. Yep. They showed some fight and toughness that we have not seen in this team. That was great to see. They they did not back down. They were not scared no. on that court at all. And let me say this, Bull. Jared yeah. Allen has been as open and honest, maybe to a fault, yeah. as any athlete I can remember over the last two weeks talking about that in particular. I think it was after the Memphis game last Monday or Sunday, whenever that game was against Memphis. Someone asked him about the perception of this team being soft. And he goes, I can't even lie to you guys. I know that's what the league says about us. And the only way we can change it is by right. coming out not against Indiana on Wednesday, not against Charlotte on Friday or whatever the days were, right? but in the playoffs. We, we have to prove it by our actions on the court in the playoffs. Yeah. And they prepared for it in practice. They talked about the ramping up in physicality in practice. And then today I asked Jared, hey, you guys did all this prep work and practice. How do you think the team executed in that regard in the game today? And he said, I was really proud of the way our guys responded because we knew it was going to be physical. We knew it was going to be chippy, but we never lost our composure. And Orlando is a team that has to make things chippy and physical, and they're going to try to get under Cleveland's skin. And the fact yeah. that in game one, Cleveland was able to kind of keep that at bay, I think is a great sign for this team moving no forward throughout this rest of the series. And, and Donovan looked pretty healthy. Oh, yeah. And what's going on with Darius's back? Are we worried about that at all? I mean, he continued to play. He's been dealing with back issues for probably a month now. He gets like a heating pad. Uh, when it comes to the bench, if you, I doubt the, the, the valleys ever show up, but he's always yeah. the trainer next to him massaging his back with a little heating pad. Yeah. Uh, just the bumps and bruises of a playoff series, Bull. And they're going to need him to be healthy as close to 100% as possible. Yeah. But I just think at this point of the season, Darius – just like Donovan and, and probably Jared and Evan to an extent too. Like they're all, all nicked up, but I'm not too yeah. worried. He hit the big shot late in the fourth quarter that uh, put a little bit of ease into Cavaliers fans' minds about his ability to contribute even yeah. if he's dealing with a little nagging back injury. All right, last thing, Mike. Big Bigger story. Evan Mobley looking like a man amongst boys in the first half or disappearing in the second half? No, the first half for sure because yeah. A – him making those first two threes changed Orlando's entire defensive scheme. They left him wide open, Bull, and said, yeah. hey, right. we don't think you're going to take that shot. Rather, let's make that shot. For him yeah. to make those two, they had to adjust how they defended the pick and roll. Then they decided, okay, we're okay switching 
We'll deal with Cole Anthony with you on the post. Not good. Spin and dunk. That didn't yep. work. <coughs> Excuse me. In the second half, they were up. Didn't need him. But what he did in the first half, beyond impressive. Yeah. Good stuff, Mike. Thanks for joining me. As always. All right, man. Work. See you. Thanks. All right. Great talking with my man, Mikey McNuggets from the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Uh, game two, Cavs and Magic back at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Monday night, Cavs will look to go up 2-0. They are a five-and-a-half-point favorite as of right now at Bet Rivers. So if you haven't used Bet Rivers, if you haven't used the app, make sure you check it out. Again, I'll give you my next baseball parlay on Tuesday. You bet on the Cavs. You can bet whatever. I mean, the Cavs and the, the over-under in this series has been pretty low, and they went way under it in the first game. But like I said, game two Monday night. And we will be back on, uh, I'll do two podcasts Monday, uh, including the, uh, the recap of the Cavs Magic Game 2. We'll talk to you next time. Where else but right here in the bullpen with Adam the Bull, brought to you by Bet Rivers. See you, everybody.